Hi everybody, my name's Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. So, have you got an interest in time travel? Have you ever wondered would you go back in time and kill a historical figure? Well, here's your chance folks. So here's five things I think you need to know about. Black Orchestra. Thing one, so what's this game all about? In Black Orchestra, you take on the role of a historical figure who's involved in a plot to try and assassinate Hitler. And the character you play is indeed one that's based on a real life person. And the events that happen during the game are also based on real historical events. Now, despite this emphasis on history, what this game really looks for is cooperation, teamwork, and meticulous attention to detail while you're trying to take down history's biggest tyrant. Um, the theme here is a really interesting one, and it's one that people often debate. You know, if you could go back in time, would you kill Hitler? Um, and despite this being a very serious theme, it's treated with a lot of respect and treated very, very carefully too. Um, overall, this game reminds me quite a bit of Pandemic, and I think that's because Pandemic also deals with quite a serious theme. Um, the idea of, you know, um, diseases breaking out all over the world, you know, killing people. They, they might be cubes and stuff, but, the, you know, they represent real people. But it's dealt with in such a manner that you can enjoy the weightier theme, um, and I feel like the exact same thing is done here in Black Orchestra. Thing two, mechanics. You'll start the game with your own character sheet and this will have a special ability on it and a unique history available just to this character. And also on your sheet, the very important fact is that there are two tracks. One is for your motivation and one is for your suspicion. The motivation reflects how eager you are to kill Hitler and the suspicion, of course, reflects how suspicious you are to the enemy. So the aim of the game really is to balance these tracks out, that you are motivated enough to try and move against Hitler, but not so suspicious that you might get caught. So this game does genuinely though focus on action point selection. At the start of a turn, you're given a choice of three actions um, and there is a whole host of things to choose from. So you can conspire, which involves you rolling dice and perhaps raising your motivation or indeed lowering, lowering Hitler's um, military support, which is really important for trying to take him down later. You can also move around the board, um, activate spaces on it. You can gather items, you can trade them. Um, you can also draw cards. Um, which you can keep for later or you can also draw plots all out of the same deck um, and plots are what you really need to kill Hitler. Um, each plot is unique and they'll require you to either be in different locations, um, have different items, they'll often have ways to boost their success which you're going to want to work toward before making an attempt. To kill Hitler you need to roll a dice and you need to roll more hits than Hitler has um, military support. So the more cards and things you have to help you all the better. At the end of each round you'll reveal a card from the event deck which really kind of brings back the historical aspect of the game as something happens that was perhaps once a real world event and this will affect how you play and sometimes how you interact with the board. Mechanically speaking, this game feels like a whole variety of co-ops where you roll, you move, you pick up items, you gather them together to try and complete the goal. For me, it's all just a little bit bare bones. I do wish it was more robust. However, the focus on this game doesn't seem to be on the mechanics, it's more on the theme. And I think if you try and solve this game, you're going to end up being horribly disappointed. Thing three, what's this game like on the table? Well, setup for Black Orchestra is really straightforward. You simply have to arrange your event decks and set up the board. Now, the board is a rather large one and most of it is dedicated to having the rules reprinted on it. And I can't decide whether I like this or not. Would I have preferred a smaller board without the rules reminders? Maybe, but then sometimes they're actually kind of useful. I think that's something you're gonna have to decide for yourselves. It took about 60 minutes for two of us to play this game and we did manage to assassinate Hitler rather early. So if you're going to play this with a group, I recommend setting aside an afternoon. It's definitely on the lengthier side. Now replayability wise, well, the, all the variation comes from where you place the items on the board at the beginning of the game, they're varied, and those event decks we talked about. Because when you put them together, there's a set number of cards for each kind of season, you make seven in total toward this, for the game, and you take out two each time you play to add a little bit of variability. 
Also, I had the Kickstarter edition, which had Conspirator Packs 1 and 2, um, and this consists of additional characters with which you can play, so that might add a little bit more to the game. On a whole, this game is very similar every time you play. Um, you can watch for particular events or particular cards coming up. You kind of get to know things fairly well. And I don't think that's necessarily the game's fault. I think it's just that it's so tied to history, it makes it a little bit inflexible. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, you can kind of see it from the box art is that they're really forcing a sense of kind of duality here or aggressiveness with kind of us versus them vibes, you know, is red versus black. And this is kind of carried through on the backs of the cards also. Um, the artwork on the cards themselves is fine. It's nice. It's, it's nothing to write home about. Um, component quality is very, very good. But you know what? There aren't a lot of components to judge. The dice are nice and chunky, the cards are linen finished, and the board is, you know, it's good. It's, it's, it's all very, very good. Speaking of the board though, that's probably the, the best piece aesthetically that the game provides. And you know what? It's probably not one that it would encourage people to come over and have a look at the game either. Um, on a whole, the game is incredibly subtle. Thing five, is this game any good? Well, I do think Black Orchestra Strength is in its theme. It's a way of uniting people and getting them to cooperate against a common enemy. And it's one as well, if you ask other people about that, it creates an open dialogue. You know, hey, do you want to play a board game about killing Hitler? And it's interesting in itself. It's a very unique draw and one that I don't think other board games can really compare to. You know, do you want to build a farm? Do you want to trade in the Mediterranean? Do you want to kill Hitler? See what I mean? It's a kind of a, a theme that can really appeal to absolutely anybody. And then making the game cooperative adds even more to this wider catchment area because cooperative games are great for new players and they're also great, you know, for people who are teaming up together. You don't have to focus on your own abilities when you're working as a team and this game is really easy to learn, easy to teach. Um, on a whole, I think Black Orchestra really reaches its net to lots and lots and lots of different types of people and different types of gamers. Now, despite the historical aspect being its greatest strength, I also think it cripples the game quite a bit. Um, the main issue I have is that every character can have a plot to complete to try and, assass to try and assassinate Hitler, but only one of them really matters. And so you usually end up working on one person's rather than your own. Um, and there's absolutely no player interaction because it doesn't make a difference whose plot you're performing. And I don't think you could add player interaction to this game. It's crying out for something like a traitor element. But if you were to add that, that would make you against the conspirators, which would make you a Nazi. And that's something that you can't really add to this game. You can't ask people to play as a, a horrible person like a Nazi. Um, and so you can see here how history um, and the setting that they have ties kind of any creativity you might have had with that. Um, not only to mention the fact that the events deck is well, it's very predictable. For sure you take some cards out each time and you rotate them, but they are historical events, um, they are real things, and you learn them as you play. And it removes any suspense or excitement the game might have had that you only get when you play it the first time. You know, the first time you play, you're going, oh, oh my God, look what just happened, you know? Um, and after that, you just come to expect it. And yet again, this is tied to history because it's so intimately connected. There isn't really room for expansion or variation there. My final issue is killing Hitler. <laughs> and no, of course, we should all kill Hitler, but not on the roll of a dice. Um, this is quite a lengthy game and you can spend all of it working your way towards getting the best dice roll possible, but it all comes down to you rolling a dice versus kind of Hitler's military strength. And um, after all of this theme and all of this kind of effort, I felt very deflated afterwards. And I didn't really feel like I deserved the victory either because it was just kind of random. And sure you can sway things in your favor, but not so much that the dice roll wasn't the key aspect. Now, there are some people who are gonna be okay with this because this game really is about theme and they won't mind that it ends with a dice roll and I salute you to those people who can do that. But for me, it just, it wasn't enough. <laughs> um, it, ju it just wasn't satisfactory enough. So on a whole, this game has so much going for it as long as you don't look too closely at it. 
Do I think you should have Black Orchestra in your collection? Well, if you're looking for an event game, this is the epitome of it. And this is the kind of game you could play with family, friends, gamers, non-gamers, anybody. It's simple enough to learn, it's easy enough to play, and it's the kind of game you want to sit down on a rainy afternoon and play together. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, then I think Black Orchestra is something you should be checking out. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel to get further updates about my videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Black Orchestra, why not let me know in the comment box below? I, I really like, do like hearing from people I'm not making that stuff up. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and of course, perusing my collection. Take care, everybody.